So I'm in the process of changing this breakout board from Delta to Star. Now, um, if you have a look closely there, it says cut for Y. So this was actually linking the second pin to one, which um, which uh, keeps it in Delta. Now cutting that there, and if we have a look on the other side of the board, um, it's all hidden under here, but you see the looped wire just in there. Um, that looped black wire in here is basically soldered. Um, is soldered here, and what that's actually doing is connecting Y, so basically star, to the one pin. So this long strip around the edge all goes to one. That's the common, and then this one here that's not got anything in it that's delta so if I want to go back to delta I can just pull this solder out and connect it back up to this pin here so I'm going to get that all back in there and the next step is coming around the back of the motor and you see where all these uh, terminals are the red wires the red little wires underneath I've got to take one of each check for the continuity and then connect those ones together separately onto a bolt and what that will do is connect us into star so um, after that I'll start the car up and see if we've actually successfully transitioned to star right, so as you can see I've taken three off of each one of these of the coil wires and I've just bolted it together and insulated it now this is going to get chucked up in that up there these are all back on and I've just tested the car and it does seem to move so I think we are hooked up in Delta so um, I mean hooked up in star sorry so we're just gonna get this all back together and then we'll give it a test and see if that's still overheating it right so we are ready to test the motor in Y I've done all the wiring up change the power change the motor connections and um, just gonna give it a go I guess it runs um, but it's weird that that's still coming up with the uh, one even though even though the motors not overheating I've literally just pulled out the drive so I don't know what that means uh, I don't know what that means so that's an interesting one that I'm not quite sure about but um, let's see how it runs in why and see if we end up overheating or not. Right, we'll see how this works because it's not that not good weather so um, but as you can see there's a lot more umph. However it does have a lower top speed because of why um, it's sitting at about the speed that you would expect out of a G Wiz. So I'm, getting, I'm probably going to be at about 40 miles an hour tops. But we'll give it a test. We'll see how it runs. And I mean, it might make the car usable for the time being until I figure out what else I'm going to do with it. Either getting an AC gearbox or um, something like that. But I apologise for the blurry video if it does go blurry because of the um, auto focusing with the rain. But, yeah, I'm back to normal G-Wiz performance. I'm at 36 miles an hour, but I'm still climbing up a hill, I guess. I'm doing 40 up a hill, so it's not terrible. Um, it is getting a bit faster, actually. 45. So I am holding out at 50. That's not terrible. on the inverter aren't even coming on now so I would imagine that we're not we're not anywhere near overheating so I guess what we'll do is take it on the dual carriageway and we'll give it a quick test and see um, see what the top speed is over there it's a bit windy today
goes faster than a G was on acceleration given that. So we're at 40, 41. It's just this wind is making it a bit more dangerous at higher speeds. But we're doing 50. So 51 is the top speed in the car right now against this wind. Now we're heading up to 53. Yeah, I think we'll. I'm not going to go any faster because of the wind, but I think we'll get 60 down the hill. It's just climbing hills, I think we'll be limited back to what the original G was, was capable of. But the inverter fans still haven't come on. would have slowed down to 30 or 40 this has only slowed down to 50 so not actually that bad not that bad at all so I think this will actually hold out at 50 miles an hour comfortably under uh, most situations badly to be honest it, it performs in Y in star it performs a little bit better than the standard G Wiz motor just a little bit I think on the main roads on flat main roads I will be capable of hitting um, 50 to 60 looking at about 45 to 50 up a hill which um, is okay for the G Wiz I wouldn't mind being able to go faster just because I can um, but for the time being, as long as this helps the car to actually function and get it on the road, then um, I might leave it at this for the time being. I can easily wire it back into Delta whenever I need to. It's just a bit of a solder job. Or what I might think about doing is getting a Y to Delta switch and um, doing it that way, which would be kind of cool so that I can have this extra torque on s small roads like here and um, less chance of overheating and misgearing. And when I'm on the motorway, I can just switch to Delta and carry on up to 60. Um, so that may be the way forward, I don't know. It's either that or trying to get hold of an AC gearbox, I guess. So, um, yeah, excuse the blurriness, I don't know why it doesn't focus in this. Ah, there we go. Um, so, um, we're almost home. The fans did actually come on for a moment there, and they went straight off almost immediately, so... I think... I think we're okay, like, I can hit 50. If I'm not on a gradient, I can hit 50 easily on flat roads. Like, I'm already at 40 right now. And um, so I, 
think this is good enough performance for the car. It's good enough performance considering that I have the overheating cut-off issue if I um, if I push it in Delta. So I've just noticed something really interesting going on with the settings. You see that as since it's only happened since I've basically stopped moving. It's um, it's taking the voltage lower and lower and lower. Now, um, why would it be doing that? It's just slowly going down and down and down. Whereas if you look at my voltage here, where is it? There we go. that's one string of the batteries at 59.6. And um, if, if I measured it, if I measured the terminals on the series end, you'll see that the voltage is still it's still very much close to 120 volts. However, this controller is reading very differently. It's still going down and down and down. So there may be a potential error here that we need to have a look at. So maybe even in Delta, maybe it wasn't actually overheating at all. Or maybe the heat is causing something to go on inside the controller. So there's the proof. We're in on the... Um, Anderson going into the controller and we're sitting at 119.6 volts down here down here it's still it's still going further down and down so there's definitely something wrong on the controller side that's um, reading the voltage in a very weird way but see that it's still dropping now one thing that could potentially be a problem, but it didn't seem to be, is um, on the other side of this connector, this is the old Anderson on the other side, and the terminals may or may not be connecting properly in there, but I did check the springs in there before I connected this back up. And it doesn't seem like there is much um, problem with the spring. It seems to be engaging. Uh, so I don't know if it is that that's the problem. I may have to pull all the batteries off and have a proper look at it. But as you can see there, there is definitely an error. So um, what I will have to do is to show this video to Wolftronics and Paul and show them what's going on with the actual uh, monologue um, data. So I'll keep an eye on this, see if it actually drops down to nothing. See, this may actually be, uh, this may be the issue is that over time, when I'm driving, this voltage meter is just constantly um, reducing and reducing. And whatever's causing it, uh, whatever's causing it, I have absolutely no idea. So there's our problem, we've just got to kind of resolve what it is. It may involve pulling this inverter out and uh, taking it apart once we figure out what exactly is the issue there. But there is definitely a voltage reading issue going from the batteries to the controller. Or something else entirely. And that's a symptom. But I guess that's it for today. I'm going to have to do some research on this and see if I can find out any more information and uh, repair this and repair this inverter. And I'll keep you updated.